The Wii U was somehow both the best thing and the worst thing that Nintendo has ever done. This console was a commercial failure for a lot of reasons, but people who had the Wii U genuinely enjoyed it. Even though it almost put Nintendo entirely out of business, the console was given some games that truly made it shine. The Wii U will always go down as one of the consoles that Nintendo released, but I think it was both one of the best things and one of the worst things that Nintendo has ever done at the same time. What are you, insane? Prior to the announcement of the Wii U, it was codenamed Project Cafe, and it was rumored to have a tablet-like controller and be the first Nintendo console to support native HDMI. On April 25th, 2011, Nintendo released an official statement announcing the Wii's successor would be released in the upcoming year. At E3 2011, people got their hands on the console for the first time and had mixed reviews about whether this console is the next generation experience that Nintendo should be striving for. It was almost a 50-50 split between people who thought that this console was going to blow the Wii out of the water or it was going to fail horribly. The Wii was an incredible success story for Nintendo and is one of their best selling consoles of all time. So needless to say, the bar was set high for its successor and with the announcement of the Wii U, Nintendo's stock price plummeted. Investors didn't have faith that Nintendo would be able to replicate the Wii's success and for good reason. The investor sentiment was that people didn't want a tablet for a controller and that the Wii was so special because of how simple it was to control. As time went on until release, more information about the console became available. For $300, you could get the basic package, which had 8GB of internal storage on the console and came with all of the necessary items to set it up. And for $50 more, you could get the deluxe version of the console, which included a black console and the game Nintendo Land along with all of the other items necessary to set up the console. Both versions of the console would be entirely backwards compatible with the Wii which would make the transition from the Wii to the Wii U as simple as possible for fans looking to upgrade. The main issue I had is that in order to get the pack in game, you had to pay $50 more. Every single Wii console came with Wii Sports, and that was something that would introduce anybody to the motion controls. Having to pay $50 more to get Nintendo Land in the console was something that I don't understand even to this day. Don't get me wrong, Nintendo Land was a great game, but they should have made it available in every console. Now, the name Wii U was not the brightest move for Nintendo. The name was not different enough to make it so people understood this was a new console. I personally had to explain to multiple people that the Wii U was not the Wii and it was an entirely different system. But ultimately, that couldn't have had much of an impact on sales, right? Oh my god! God! The day of release came when the Wii U launched in Japan on December 8th, 2012 and in North America on November 18th, 2012. And the console did not perform well. Throughout its lifetime, the Wii U sold 13.5 million units worldwide. Having such a low install base compared to the Wii made it so developers were not jumping to bring their games to the console. Add on to the fact that this game was not as strong as the PS4 or the Xbox One, and it was a nightmare for third-party developers. Nintendo struggled to communicate to consumers that this was a new product, and ultimately, the marketing for this console was terrible and the sales suffered because of it. Now, changing the name of the console may have helped, but this console also struggled with the fact that it was following in the footsteps of one of the most successful consoles of all time. By the end of the Wii's life cycle, many fans had either moved on to consoles that were more powerful or didn't see the need to upgrade. Most of the games that were on the Wii satisfied the needs of the consumers who bought them, and the Wii U struggled to get people to get a new console. The most divisive part of about the new console was the gamepad. I look at the gamepad as a hybrid between the Wii and the Switch in all of the worst ways. I want to preface that I love the Wii U, and I think if this console had better marketing, it would have done so much better. But the main complaint of the time and to this day is that the gamepad was so bulky and didn't offer enough freedom. There were loads of games that I loved being able to walk around and play, and the Wii U offered me the ability to do so. Having a screen directly on the gamepad for you to play on was something really nice, and I think was a great learning lesson for Nintendo that helped them succeed so much with the Switch. But having a stylus for the touchscreen led to my console getting really beaten up within two years of getting it. And even with the ability to replace it, it didn't seem worth it because it was just going to happen again and again. I found myself using the Pro Controller a lot more than I did the gamepad unless the game specifically required me to use it. But even though the console struggled with its hardware, it had a pretty great library of games that allowed everybody to find exactly what they might want on the console. Where the Wii U shined the best was 
was the Virtual Console. It took what the Wii did well and expanded on it by adding Game Boy Advanced and Wii games to its console. I have such a large library of old retro games on my Wii U and it would be really nice if it was available on modern hardware. The Virtual Console was the best way to play old Nintendo games if you didn't own them yourself. And it's really sad that Nintendo won't go back to that at this time. But to no surprise to anybody, the most successful game on the console was Mario Kart 8. This game revolutionized the Mario Kart formula in ways that are still talked about to this day. Because not only is this game the best-selling Wii U game, it's also the best-selling Switch game. This was one of the games that made people really talk about this console. Now, even though Mario Kart Wii was something special and had its own unique charm and paired so well with motion controls, Mario Kart 8 blew it out of the water. I remember having conversations in school with people saying they weren't going to get the new Mario Kart because they could just play Mario Kart Wii on their Wii U. And the only way they were going to get it is if Mario Kart 8 did something crazy. And they did just that. Mario Kart 8 was just what Mario Kart fans had been dreaming of and it had such intricate car customization and a great pool of characters along with the anti-gravity mechanics that made this something special and a system seller. If there's no Funky Kong, I don't want it. And even though it wasn't one of the biggest sellers, another game that took over the Wii U for a short time was Super Mario Maker. The chokehold that Super Mario Maker ended up having was something I was really surprised about. This game took over YouTube and Twitch for a pretty long time and had people genuinely freaking out because they couldn't beat some of the levels that were available. This game allowed you to make your own custom Mario worlds and share them with friends online, and people flocked to this game for the challenge. This game led to the development of a sequel, Super Mario Maker 2, and that game released and was something, but the most notable new franchise on the Wii U was Splatoon. Splatoon is a very interesting game for Nintendo to have made. I didn't expect a lot out of it when it was announced, but when it released, I was extremely impressed by how much fun it was. It even led to Splatoon 2 and 3, and all three games have been a great time that I've spent too many hours on. Even with these games being successful, the Wii U didn't have any games that really pushed people into buying the console. Looking at the sales between Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U, you can tell that the Wii U didn't have what it needed needed in order to get out there. The two biggest problems with the Wii U is that it couldn't compare in terms of power to other consoles on the market, and it didn't have the hybrid console flexibility that it should have. But this console inspired Nintendo to create something truly special with the Switch and really made them lean into the hybrid experience that people wanted. Walking around the house with the Wii U just to get slightly too far away from the console and have it disconnect was something that frustrated me to no end. I was hoping that Nintendo would release a Wii U Pro that offered way more flexibility, and with the announcement of the Switch, I got extremely happy. What the Wii U did so well was be a perfect stepping stone for Nintendo to move from the home console and handheld era to the hybrid release era. I truly believe the Switch would not have have been as big of a success if Nintendo didn't fail as hard as they did with the Wii U. At the end of the day, the Wii U did something great even if it didn't perform as well sales-wise. I still have my Wii U because it does things that the Switch can't, like play virtual console games, or play backwards compatible with the Wii. People clown on the Wii U for being a failure and almost putting Nintendo out of business, but I truly believe that they learned from their failures and made something special and took the advice they were given from both fans and investors and did everything they could. As we get closer to the reveal of Nintendo's new console, I'm really hoping that they keep the memory of the Wii U in mind when they're transitioning from console generations. The lessons that Nintendo took from this console directly impacted the Switch and I hope those lessons are not lost when transitioning again. If you made it this far in the video, I just wanna say thank you for watching. I hope you and your family have an incredible rest of your day, and if you enjoyed anything you saw here, please consider subscribing.